Hi, and welcome to video tutorial number two in the Red's Cloud UI setup process. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set up an actual query and test and build the table um, in the database. Our system actually handles all of that automatically, um, but we do need to make sure that it tests properly. So the first thing we want to do is let's go over this initial screen. Um, this is the query screen and we got to it by clicking on our queries tab. And here we're actually going to see the name of the query, the log file, and the remove query button. To create a new query, we can use this pull down which was automatically created from the MLS when we verified the REDS connection. If I click on this, we do have a lot of options in here. Um, these options change from MLS to MLS. And if you have multiple MLSs, you're going to notice major differences between each MLS. This system gives us a lot of options, but mainly what you will probably see is property um, options. So property residential, property rentals, property lot and land, income property, and etc. So if we wanted to create a new query for property commercial, we could click on this, give it a name, click add, and there's our new query. I'm going to go ahead and remove that for now since we will not be working on that. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click on the word test, which is what I named it. In this screen, we're actually going to see the last time our metadata was updated, which is here, the last time the query was run, the last time the image download was run, and the last time the image upload was run. Now, if our metadata is old or let's say a week old, or if you got an email from your MLS that they updated fields, it's really a good idea to go ahead and click this update and build metadata button. Clicking that button could take several minutes depending on the speed of your MLS. Once that runs, it actually writes a file and then we can actually use that when setting up our queries. The first option in our query is the schedule. Now by default, it will be set to off, but you can choose to run this every 24 hours or hourly, depending on the type of load your server can handle. The most common setting is hourly. The first option we have here is the limit. Um, and this will tell the MLS to just give us a certain amount of records at a time. This can be one, this could be 10, 500, 1,000, but this is only if the MLS supports it. Not all MLS servers do support the limit. So by default, this is off unless it's specified. The next three fields are actually the date field of when you'd like to start. When you do an initial load, normally you'll want to start about a year in the past. So in this case, we'd probably want to start it August 28, 2011. I'm going to go ahead and leave it August 28, 2012 because our current database is already up to date. The next option is the day span. And this number will push the, the days back on each query. So because this server is only providing active information, we're actually requesting 400 days worth of information at a time. This server is very small. Um, we're actually only getting about 138 records at a time. This isn't a significant load on the server or the REDS cloud, so we're going to go ahead and leave it at 400 days. So every time it runs, it'll take the current day and go back 400 days and pull all records within that time period. The next option is days to go back and this is run when we reach the current date. So when the system 
gets to today's date, which in this case is 8-28-2012, it will go back 365 if that's what we want. Or we could have it go back 600 days. In most cases, this is left blank or a zero and doesn't need to be filled out unless you require it. If you have questions about any of these fields, you can always contact uh, support. The next is the database table. Um, this database table can be different for every query or it could be the same. So in this case we have residential. If we were to make a query for commercial, we could actually place the same table name and it will include that information in the same table. So we'll have residential and commercial all within the same table. But again, you can also split that out if you'd rather. The system will actually build the tables for you and add all the appropriate fields and size them based on the MLS uh, field sizes that we get. Uh, the next button is a query builder. I'm going to go ahead and skip that just for a second. Um, next is the image settings, but we're going to see that in the next tutorial video. Um, the next button is the test image, which again we'll see in the next tutorial video. Uh, we do have a field mapping button. Um, we will not be using that right now. It is a feature that is coming soon, um, but is not currently in the Red's Cloud UI system. And then the most important button on this system is the build table and test query. This will actually build the database table and make sure that the query can run on the RET server. It'll load about 20 properties, and if it's successful, those properties will appear in your database. I'm going back up now, and we're going to go ahead and look at the query builder and optional field list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Um, this query builder is fairly straightforward. If you're familiar with RETs, um, you do have a lot of control here on how to construct your queries. If you're not, there are some guidelines and some hints of how to get started. Most MLS servers need at least one query field to get started. Normally, that's going to be some sort of last modified date time. Something like this. Um, you'll see this bracket TS bracket and that will be automatically replaced with the current timestamp. Um, so whenever you have a date field that just needs the current timestamp you can always just put it in brackets and it will pull in the current timestamp. If you need a specific date you can always just put that right in after the equal sign. Our current query we have is a search price between 0 and 60 million um, and then the various status um, types and you'll see here that we do have an equal pipe symbol which means uh, we have multiple options so most of the MLS servers do support the pipe symbol some don't if you are seeing a query er error you may want to check that and either put a pipe symbol in where you have multiple options or take it out depending on the MLS server. And then we also are using the TS in brackets and our current MLS's last modified date time stamp is this field. So we have this field equals the current timestamp. The next field here is a list of fields if you need only a couple fields returned from the MLS. By default, our system will return all fields and set up all fields in your table. If you're only looking for one, two, or 25 certain fields, you can just list the fields in here and it will only return and set up the table with those fields um, listed. The next is an important field because we do not want duplicates in our database. So we do need to know which field will be unique. Some MLSs provide this information in the metadata, 
Some don't. In this case, we don't know which field is unique. The MLS does not provide that information in the um, data that's returned. So we do have to specify it. In this case, our field is MLN number. And we found this by referencing the metadata that was pulled up. This is the metadata in blue. Um, this is the system name, which is straight, and the long name, which is italicized. So if we scroll down to the M's, we will see MLN number, actually means the listing number, and that's okay to go ahead and set up as a unique identifier. This will make sure that we don't have any duplicates in the system, and our system will override information appropriately. Once we have that in place, we can go ahead and click Save, and we're actually done with the query. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and click on the Build Table and Test Query. You can always build the table at any time. It will not disrupt any of your data or replace any of your data or remove any tables. The metadata does sometimes change. You might receive an Emma, um, sorry, you might receive an email from your MLS stating the changes. And if so, it's always a good idea to go ahead and come in here, click on update and build metadata. And once that's done, go ahead and click on build table and test query. This will update the table, add any fields that have been left out. Um, and that way your feed doesn't stop working. I'm going to go ahead and click Build Table and Test Query to make sure everything is set right. And if it is, we'll get a success message and 20 records in our database. This may take um, a few seconds to a couple minutes to run depending on the speed of the MLS server. and it built the table and tested the query. Everything returned properly. It was successful and inserted 20 records into our table. So right now we are all set. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. And since we currently have this query running on the hour, we do get log reports. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on logs and it will tell you that it's starting the checks. It will also tell you um, the query that was run and how many properties were loaded at any given time. So this is a good place to make sure everything's up and running correctly. If there are any errors, they will show here. Some MLSs will show errors, but they are sometimes temporary errors. So if you have any questions, make sure you contact support and let us know. Thank you for listening to this video. Um, if you need to have photos downloaded, the next video, tutorial number three, will tell you exactly how to do that. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.